Joining us now is the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Republican Congressman Ed Royce of California. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for coming in. Now, what do you make of these latest developments? The Iraqi Peshmerga, those are the Kurdish fighters, moving through Turkey into Kobani supposedly very soon. How much of a difference could this make? Well, I think psychologically it's essential that we get relief in to the Kurdish forces there in Syria, and the fact that it's the Peshmerga, it's their brethren, the fact that the Turks allowed them to traverse their area, um, and hopefully they're better armed than we have had in the past. You know, one of the arguments we have been making in Congress is that the Peshmerga need to be much better armed with the weaponry because they're only going to be as good as the heavy equipment that they bring in with them. Uh, but if, if uh, Bringing that into play, these 200 or so fighters can psychologically make the difference. It's hugely important to the region because the whole sales pitch of recruitment uh, on the part of ISIS is that we're unstoppable. We can't be pushed out of Kobani. We will take the town. And so right now this is a game of psychological warfare for the hearts and minds of uh, those fighters, uh, would-be fighters, young men who, who follow this and might be allured into it. Uh, they need to see ISIS defeated in Kobani. Is it true, based on all the information you have, Mr. Chairman, that ISIS is using these chlorine uh, gas attacks against uh, the Kurdish, Syria, uh, Kurdish forces in Syria and Iraqi troops in Iraq? Yes, we've, we've seen uh, evidence of four cases of it, and given the brutality, of course, of ISIS, uh, there is no question that as they get their hands on any of the inventory, that was either in uh, Saddam's or certainly we know recently that Assad has used chlorine at, at gas attacks on, on uh, his own people, they wouldn't hesitate, and they're not hesitating. The Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons told NBC News they can't act right now, they can't even investigate, because the government in Baghdad hasn't formally complained about this. What's going on? We don't know what's going on, and of course, one of the big problems with the government in Baghdad is it, it is so lopsided in terms of its allegiance uh, or its um, ties with the government in Iran. This is why Sunnis have been ostracized. This is why the Kurds can't get the, the heavy weapons that they need or their troops can't get paid. Our great hopes, of course, is that what will ultimately happen is that before this is over, they will have a national government, a national government in uh, Iraq, which represents all three, you know, Kurd, uh, Sunni, and Shia. And if that happens, you would have competent governance. But at this point, we do not. ISIS uh, apparently now has these shoulder-fired missiles. They shot down two Iraqi helicopters. How concerned are you? How concerned is the U.S.? that they could go after U.S. helicopters, U.S. C-130s, could effectively reach the Baghdad International Airport, shut down flights over there? Well, they're 15 miles away, and of course, uh, this is why we want to see the government in Baghdad get its act together and be able to pull Sunnis in uh, in support of governmental policy. And it's also why we have to do a, a better job of being aggressive in reaching out to the Sunni tribes. We have many uh, personnel who, a senior level military in the United States who were involved in training. Frankly, having them in the process in Baghdad of reaching out to the Sunni tribes and doing the, the mending in governance, giving responsible positions to Kurds and Sunnis as well, will do so much uh, to, to basically put the military back into a position where it can conduct operations, but right now it's perceived as Shia-led, and of course that's the, that's the problem, Wolf. That's the perception. we got some more breaking news I want to share with you, Mr. Chairman. We've just received a statement from the Secretary of Homeland Security, Jay, Jay Johnson, announcing uh, dramatic new security procedures underway that are about to begin at U.S. government buildings here in Washington, D.C., as well as in other major cities. Uh, he says uh, that we want to enhance its presence and security, the U.S. government uh, at various U.S. buildings in Washington, D.C., other major cities and locations around the country. He says we are taking this action as a precautionary step to safeguard U.S. government personnel and facilities and the visitors to those facilities. The reasons for this action are self-evident, Jay Johnson says, the continued public calls by terrorist organizations for attacks on the homeland 
and elsewhere. And he refers to what happened in Canada over the past few days. Uh, uh, this sounds like a pretty uh, ominous new development. Well, remember, this is a precaution. And I talked to the other day, uh, the other day I spoke with the head of diplomatic secur security in the United States. There is a series of steps that we're taking, knowing that ISIS, their main objection, of course, is that these are governments, democratically elected governments, so the law is not coming from God, it's coming, in their mind, from man. And so any type of uh, democratic system they view as inherently the enemy, inherently evil. So an attack on the parliament, that, that's why the Canadian parliament would be the target, uh, the same situation in Europe or in the United States. And so the, these are why, this is why these steps are being taken now. Have you heard of any intelligence that suggests uh, this is based this new precautionary measures, the greater security that the Department of Homeland Security is now going to install at major federal buildings in Washington, elsewhere around the country. Is it based on a specific threat? There was a specific request made about a month ago by uh, ISIS for their foreign, for their uh, fighters. They're, they're looking now at lone wolves to attack. Um, instruments of, uh, that represent Western governments, basically. And I believe that that's what we're looking to, especially in light of what had happened, what had transpired uh, with uh, the attack in Ottawa. And so uh, that's, why, that's why these precautions are yeah. put in place. And what was alarming to me last week when I interviewed Lisa Monaco, uh, the president's uh, advisor on counterterrorism, she referred to that Khorasan terror group in uh, Iraq uh, and Syria, the Khorasan group, she said, posed an imminent threat, her words, imminent threat to the United States. Uh, that's pretty specific right there. What do you know about this Khorasan imminent threat? Well, we know they're senior al-Qaeda. We know that they have uh, expertise in, uh, in bomb making uh, and in trying to develop bombs which cannot be detected on a, a plane or uh, coming into the country. And in the past, we've uh, identified those targets. The United States has struck on those targets to try to take out their bomb-making facility uh, and to try to take out their senior personnel. Um, I think that this is an ongoing effort on our part to neutralize that threat. And Jay Johnson, the Secretary of Homeland Security, urges state and local government law enforcement to be equally vigilant, particularly in guarding against potential small-scale attacks by a lone offender or a small group of individuals. Uh, we're going to have much more on this breaking news coming up. In the meantime, though, Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Wolf. Ed Royce is the Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, up next.